Hello guys, welcome to Foot Manager 15, centre half here, this is my series called Chance. Now, before we start, if you haven't got a clue what this series is about, I really recommend you watch the first two episodes. I've made a playlist for this series, so you can easily follow it if you're joining a bit late. But you have to watch the first two episodes, just to have a clue about what is going on. But in brief, if you can't be bothered to watch the first two episodes, you have no idea what's going on. Basically, at the start of every transfer window... I draw a chance card which will tell me to do something in this save and basically screw me over. <laughs> and the first chance card I got was to sign a Basque player. Now at the end of the episode guys, I'm going to show you how you find Basque players if you're not managing a Basque club. It's actually quite a bit of a mission. They haven't made it easy in the game because obviously if you're managing a team like Everton or Aston Villa, why you want to be searching for only Basque players? You're not going to want to unless you're doing a silly challenge like me. But I'll show you that at the end of the episode if you're interested. But Everton only started with £5 million transfer budget, so I had to raise some capital from somewhere. I had to sell some players. The first player I sold, if you have a look on the right-hand side of the screen, was Antolin Alcaraz. Um, I sold him for a million pounds. A good deal, to be honest, because Everton got him for free last year. He played six games in total. Um, a few of them off the bench, I believe, for Everton. Uh, and then we got a million pound profit from him. And he only played six games for Everton last year. Decent business there. And then I had to sell a big player. Because I really needed serious cash to buy these players that I wanted to on the left. I'll get to them in a minute. Easy lads, calm down. Um, I tried to sell Kevin Morales. There was no market for him. No one wanted to buy him. I tried to sell Aidan McGeady. Yet again, the same problem. No one wanted to buy him. So I had to sell Baines. He was the only other big player that was worth selling. And United came in with a stonking offer of 20 million squids. And I could not say no. He's 29 years of age. He's almost 30. His attributes are bound to decrease within a few years probably the best time to sell him because his value will go down within a year most probably because he's, he's, he'll be 30 in a few, few months. I had to get rid of him to get the money to reinvest in the club and buy this Bass player most importantly because I didn't want to I didn't want to cheat the system. I wanted to go out and buy a proper Bass player. I could have gone out and bought a Bass player for quarter of a meal, half a meal and just stuck him in the reserves but I wanted to play it properly. I wanted to buy a Bass player that could actually have an influence on the first team. And as you can see, going to the left hand side, you can see the boy I bought at, the, right, at right at the top called Emmanuel. I can't pronounce his name. Emmanuel Agaretsk. I should have searched that before I done this episode. I'm sorry, lads. Um, Emmanuel Agaretsk is what he's going to be called until I be bothered to search up how you pronounce it. Uh, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. I'm glad I signed him. I got him for 10.75 million, which is not cheap considering. He's 27 years of age, but he looked like a good player to be in my 4-4-2. Now, if you don't know my tactic, I'll show it to you in a minute. But it involves a deep line forward that sits behind a complete forward. But the deep line forward is very central. He's more central than the complete forward. It's a weird tactic. It's asymmetrical. I'll show you in a minute. So you find as well, not only is the deep line forward the one that's coming back and getting the ball and linking up the midfield to the... Uh, the complete forward, he's also the guy that tends to be on the penalty spot the most when the ball comes down wide. So it's good that he's got the height and also he's got the passing. He's got the passing and he's got the technique to come deep and the mental attributes as well, which is very underrated in Football Manager. But then he's also got the height, the strength and the heading attributes to go forward, get on that penalty spot, get in that box and bang in a couple of goals with his big old spam. Emmanuel Agaretz, 10.75 million. Not bad business, I don't think. He's the best player I got. Thank you, above the heavens, for uh, making me sell Baines and buy that legend. <laughs> uh, and then I had to go out and build this team around to a, what I liked. And surprisingly, Everton was struggling to meet the squad registrations rule. I didn't even know this. Um, they only had a, eight, eight players already that were uh, UK-born. I can't remember what the rules are exactly. So I went out and got some British-born players. First one, Mark Noble. Sorry, actually, I think Mark Noble might even be Irish-born. No, nope, he's London. Cockney th through and through. Uh, he's, he brought him to be in my centre midfield. He's going to be like an old Paul Scholes. He's going to sit next to MacArthur, and Noble's going to be the one moving around, and MacArthur will be the guy, the Irish legend, sitting deep and holding that, back, that middle four rigid, like Keane used to do. So I've got a nice partnership there between Noble and MacArthur. I think it's going to be the new Skulls and Keane. I'm looking forward to seeing that flourish, that partnership. 
I'm glad I signed him. 5.5 million pounds, definitely a bargain for a player I think in real life really should be in the England squads. I think he deserves a call up, even just one. He definitely deserves one cap at least. Great lad. I uh, I love Mark Noble. He's one of my favourite players. And then I went out and got a bargain, an absolute bargain. I felt like Harry Redknapp when I'd done this boy. Um, Chris Smalling, I got him from United for six million squids. Six million squids, absolute fucking bargain. They got him for ten million pounds in uh, 2010, and he was absolutely useless, really. Um, 25 at- uh, appearances for uh, United last year, and we got him for six million pounds. Great business from me, if I don't say so myself. Six million pounds. I could have got Jones for a bit more, but his wages would have been far too much that we couldn't afford, and uh, it was gonna cost a lot more transfer fee as well. Glad I got Chris Smalling. We've got four quality centre backs now. I'll show you them in a minute. It's Jackie Elka, Distin, John Stones, and Chris Smalling. That is a quality four centre backs. And then finally, Neil Taylor. Now I'll get to Neil Taylor in a minute, but firstly, I want to show you the first three fixtures of the Premier League. And look at it, absolutely atrocious. But it's not as bad as it looks, let me say you that first. First of all, we started off with a game against Man City and it was pretty much deadlock. It was absolutely deadlock. It was, to be honest, it was a boring game. It was being completely played in midfield. Hardly ever did it leave that, that middle third, as you can see there. That's quite high, 57% of the game was played in that midfield. Uh, we didn't do too badly on possession, 48% possession against a team... Like Man City, a team who plays with five central midfielders. Or oh, they did in this game. They played Silva and Nasri um, behind Aguero. And then Yaya Torre, Milner and Fernandinho just behind those, the Nasri and Silva. So we've done well to to uh, keep as much possession as we did. But we couldn't win that midfield battle. And Man City eventually got a goal from a set piece. Company got his noggin on that head and buried it into the back of the net. I'm not going to show you the highlights because these games were all awful. I don't want to bring back bad memories for me. We then went on to play Swansea away from home, a game we had to win after losing the first game in the Premier League. And we lost again and again. We didn't score. And this was starting to indicate to me the problems we had. But first of all, let me just show you the possession we had. 57% possession, which is... You should be winning a game, really, if you've had 57% possession. But, as you can see, only three shots on target and ten shots at all compared to Swansea's 15 Romelu Lukaku and Agarets here really made me feel that it was not a partnership that is going to work. Lukaku there had an average rating of 6.2. Agarets had an average rating of 6.6. Just no clinicalness in that front two, unfortunately. There was there seemed to be a lack of pace as well. Agarets, although he's great on the ball, he's sluggish. He's sluggish off the ball and he doesn't really get into those positions. Once he's got the ball, he's got he's quite technical, but he, he can't really do much off the ball. And Lukaku just didn't play well at all. So it's not a partnership I was keen. I'm thinking about changing that one because it wasn't working. And it was cemented in the next game where we lost to Aston Villa. Getting zero points out of nine games. But we took some positives from this game. As you see, again, possession went up again. 60% possession to 40. You really should be winning a game like that. Agaret's got a goal, which was nice to see. Lukaku had an atrocious game again. Pardon me, sorry lads. But Mark Noble had a great game. It was nice to see my two signings having the two highest ratings. And Morales as well had a great game as well. He got an 8.0. So there were some positives to be seen as well. Smalling, he, he played, but uh, he wasn't fit enough to play the whole 90 minutes. We were just trying to get his match fitness up. But then, after taking a 1-0 lead, we should have closed the game out, considering we were on poor form. But Aston Villa hit us with three reasonably quick goals. One at the end of the first half, two early on in the second half, and it just put the game to bed. We should have won this game. If you look at the stats, 17 shots to their 9. 60% possession to their 40. We really should have won. But unfortunately, as you know, look here, look at the stats as well. 22% of our possession was in their third. But Lukaku just disappointed. He really disappointed. So I think I've got to change the players in this lineup. It's not working. Um, and now let, let me quickly show you the how to find Basque players. What you do is you get onto your general info. You go... Custom, you add Second Nation, you put it in order, um, so you do custom, blah blah blah, and you add, how do you do it, insert column, and you find Second Nation, and then you put it in order, and then you can scroll down, you're going to have to put some extra filters in, otherwise you're going to end up with every Basque player you can possibly sign, so I've put in 
the value is at least £1 million. And uh, there's the players I was looking at. Inigo Martinez, Susayeta, um, Markel. All of them were either too expensive or not good enough. That's the end of the episode, guys. I will see you later. Bye-bye.